Hey, good day everybody, Flyers fans. This is the next edition of the Gritties Take as the Flyers have another woeful loss again um, as they fall 6-3 to three to the Buffalo Sabres as Claude Drew and Cam Atkinson continue to have their good seasons. Um, Ristolainen was able to get one through more because Michael Hauser wasn't able to close the wickets and I don't know what type of defense that was letting them uh, step up that much there and have as much room as a defenseman. But he was able to score when it looked like things were getting brighter for the Flyers at that moment in the game when he scored to tie it up and then G scored on the deflection from Provorov where Atkinson got one of his two assists on that goal as well. But then after that, it was all Sabres. This game, though, the one thing we do have to point out is, like JJ said, he would be a lot more ecstatic as as what I in this video if the Flyers were going anywhere this season or that was a playoff game. With the way that call went, because it took so long, you had the one view. It clearly showed that there was offsides. It wasn't by much, but it showed there was offsides. And I'm tired of the league. And I've said this with and others with different videos, too, when it comes to other teams of the league protecting the refs too much, or the refs always finding a way. Jones even said on the broadcast, they tend to always try to find a way to stick with the Cole call and find a way to make it inconclusive because then, obviously, they look better. So, I mean, it's stupid to even have a review if you're just going to have for, like, the 85th time this season. Obviously, that's an over-exaggeration uh, for not the Flyers, but just in general in the league. Reviews that clearly should have been overturned not. And then it leads to a power play. They scored on that power play. <laughs> Um, when they entered the zone and Tage Thompson was able to score, but then it leads to another power play that Tage Thompson immediately scores on. So um, it, that was completely a momentum shifter uh, once the refs blew that call. But at the same time, in the same degree, the Flyers have to, the fact of the matter is, they have to bounce back and still be able to play. You can't let the ref rule you. And as it's been, like I said in the preview, whenever something hits in the negative, everything falls for this team, like last season. There's no fight like the 1920 team. There's no battle back, unless if you're Drew Atkinson and other select players. Fairby was one of them, and he's out now. Um, so, like, there's only a couple guys that have had that scratch and claw mentality to them. The rest of the team, once you're down, you're just out. And that's how it was today. There was no battle back. Peyton Krebs was able to score. He scored two straight and then almost scored a hat trick. Had an opportunity, but the save was made. Martin Jones did not play good in this game. Um, the Flyers played overall um, a poor game. Were they able to get shots on net? Sure, but they were not high. Um, Goal scoring chance shots because uh, Michael Hauser's had a great story, worked his way up, has been a very good ECHL goal turner, has had good success at time in the AHL, and is a great story of love of the game, like Jim Jackson said, to get to the NHL. But, like, you should be able to generate a little bit more offense against him. You got the late goal, which gave you the third goal um, to Giroud, but they haven't scored since December 18th. December 18th, four goals in a game. So it's been too long. Obviously, that's not going to win you hockey, and hasn't. Is this the 11th game losing streak due to a lack of goal scoring again? For this game, it was also due to poor goaltending, which has not been a big issue in the losing streak. And also, just due to the down-and-out mentality. Once the Flyers are down-out, they literally just go, well, this is it. And then they have no bounce back or no resilience like we've seen, even with the better play down at the Lehigh level, the Phantoms do, and especially the Reading Royals have perseverance, resilience, whatever um, word you want to use as like their tag this year. Whenever they're down, they, that team never seems out. Where the Flyers, they need to have to find something, need to find some spark um, because it's 11 games. Uh, it's two 10-game losing streaks in the same season now, one being 11. Um it, it, this is a team, I said eight in the preview, I don't know where I got eight from, it's 13 times, uh, they haven't made the postseason um, in their history, not eight, but they've made it 40 out of 53 times and have two championships, so that's still a very good percentage. Uh, the problem with the Flyers is the past 10 years, um, and, and specifically the year since uh, the great Mr. Snyder pays, it hasn't been that good, and that's what made us, yes, we made the players five times, but that's also what's led to the seasons having more mediocre play in the last five to six years, leading to our winning percentage in the last 10 years actually being at 49.5, under 50%, and that's not going to get you a cup, that's not going to get you the promised land of where we want to go. Uh, the Flyers need to figure something out. Today was an ugly game again. Yes, the refs blew a call with the offsides, but you can't have the refs rule your day. You have to be able to have some bounce back. 
And once they blew that call, I don't know about you guys, but I immediately thought, well, that's kind of, if they score on this power play that they now get, that seems like it might be the icing on the cake because that's how the Flyers are this season. Once they're down, they're done. Um, Once they get affected by something like that, like a call, which you can't let completely destroy everything for you going forward in the game, which they did, they're out. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, This was a goal or a game of two goals. Uh, for the Sabres, as Skinner was able to get two goals, Krebs was able to get two goals, and then, of course, Taze Thompson was able to get two goals, and also Claude Giroux for the Flyers uh, was able to get two goals with Risto getting the other, so it was a game of two goals, but it was not a good game at all for the Flyers, unless if your name's Claude Giroux and or Cam Atkinson, Risto had some nice, uh, played solidly as well, was able to pot the goal that went through the wickets of Hauser, that Hauser would want back, but the goaltending was not good in this game, the play overall was not good in this game, gotta be much better uh, going forward, uh, there was some betterment in the last few, I guess, <laughs> like the coaches are trying to sell and everything, where well, you lost 3-2 to Boston and the Rangers, then we got killed by the Islanders, but then lost in the next game 4-3, and then didn't play a good game against Columbus, even though we lost 2-1. to one. But there's been some build even in the losing streak, I guess, like the coaches have been saying. But this one, there was no build. There's not much to take from it other than if you're Giroux or Atkinson and maybe Ristolainen as well. But everybody have a great save and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below. Above on the easy-to-use widget. Hopefully the Flyers are able to turn this thing around. Their next game will be Monday versus Dallas at 7 p.m. The Dallas Stars, too. One thing about them. They are a better team than the Philadelphia Flyers. That's for darn sure. But the thing that about them is they are mediocre on the road at 6-12-1. So we'll see how that plays. Obviously, none of that helps the Flyers. The Blue Jacks have a mediocre. The, 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 um, the Sabres are one of the worst teams in the league, and they still obviously kept the Flyers losing streak going. So please uh, continue to subscribe down below. Peace out, everybody. Go Flyers. Hopefully we can answer back and actually get in the win column on Monday.